Beth Grossman from AdBiblio for today's Wednesday webinar on um, paid online book advertising with AdBiblio. I ran across Mary Beth at a recent conference, and uh, what they were doing I thought was very interesting for authors. This is a uh, AdBiblio is an excellent example of a service that used to be only available to publishers, but now they've figured out a way to make it efficient and cost effective for authors. And so I thought we'd get Mary Beth on the phone, have her tell us a little bit about it, ask her some tough questions about whether it makes sense for me or for me as an author. Um, Mary Beth, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about AdBiblio? Great. Thank you, Bill. Yes, I'm really excited to be here, and thank you to everyone who is listening in today. Um, yes, my name is Mary Beth, and I am the sales account manager and one of the developers of AdBiblio. AdBiblio is an online book advertising platform, and I will dive, obviously, into the service a lot more later. But we're a company that is actually an extension of blogads.com, which has been helping advertisers place ads on niche blogs since 2002. So we've been doing this for a long time. I've, I've worked with hundreds of publishers, authors, and booksellers uh, to advertise their books or events to targeted audiences online. I am a member of the IBPA. I've attended their university, actually, back in March. I've attended the Self-Publishing Book Expo, as Bill knows. Um, I've exhibited at Book Expo America. This was our first year we were actually there. Um, and I've been there several times myself, and you know, as well as other events. Comic-Con, Boston Book Festival, NEBA and SIBA, which are the Northeastern and Southern Independent Bookseller trade shows. So basically a lot of traveling, but a lot of learning. I've gained a ton of knowledge about the online book advertising industry in general, um, what works, what doesn't, what authors need, what readers want, and I'm, I'm really excited to be here today and share my insights with all of you and, of course, learn from all of you as well. Fantastic. Thanks, Mary Beth. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I want to remind everybody today is that we positively want to have a, an interactive session. So um, I think most of you are regulars. Go ahead and throw questions up into the chat box. I'll, uh, when it's appropriate, I'll, I'll interrupt us. I'll, get, I'll read the question out loud. I'll tell who it's from, and we'll see if we can't either answer it or take it down for follow-up later. Um, Mary Beth, I think you want to go over some key points today, starting with mm -hmm. uh, how important it is for online book advertising and, and platforms. Exactly. Yes, first, um, I just want to cover a couple of reasons on why online advertising is important. And I'll also quickly touch on a couple of platforms other than AdBiblio as options for advertising your book. And then I'll dive into AdBiblio and the services we offer, and I'll show you a couple of successful campaigns. And then, if you're interested, um, how to set up your own campaign. All right. Yeah, so first, if we want to talk about the importance of online book advertising. So this fact here, this is always a bit of a terrifying fact to look at when you just publish a book. Um, there are somewhere between 600,000 and a million books published every year in the U.S. alone. Depending on which stats you believe, it's funny because I have been to several conferences now, um, and I hear something different <laughs> everywhere that I go. But the point is, <laughs> I'm sure everyone's familiar with that. Um, the point is, is that it's a crazy packed marketplace. And it's definitely safe to say that an unknown author might have trouble selling their books with thousands, you know, maybe millions of other books out there. You know, you probably all, all heard that writing the book is the easy part. It's selling the book that's the hardest. Um, yeah, that does kind of seem to carry some truth. Um, as a self-published self author, you know, you really don't have the help of a major publisher advertising your book on their site or, you know, putting you in a bookstore and basically kind of carrying you through that entire um, process. And truthfully, truthfully, from what I've found working with both publishers and authors, is that a lot of the times, even if you are working with a publisher, you're still going to have to do some of the work yourself uh, to get noticed at a certain level. Which, which brings me to our next slide. I, I love this analogy. <laughs> I use it all the time. Um, doing business without advertising is like winking at a girl in the dark. You know what you are doing, but no one else does. No one else does. You know, so the point with this is, is that if you want the girl to see you winking at her, you've got to find a way to turn on the light. Um, you know, so really here's the thing. As readers, we want to share your book with our friends and with our families, on our social media, whatever, but we need to know about it first. Um, the more familiar something is, the more valuable it is in the consumer's eye. And, you know, it's, it's kind of like... <laughs> Uh, why, you know, why is the Mona Lisa considered to be one of the greatest paintings in the world? 
you know, because everybody knows about it. Everyone's familiar with it. Um, and it's, it's the same with your book. You know it's valuable. I know it's valuable. Um, but, you know, if you're a thriller writer and it's a thriller book, you need people who love to read thriller books and have a history of, you know, even buying thriller books um, to know that it's valuable, to know that it's out there. Uh, so, you know, advertising online is, um, for many reasons and in many cases, the best way to do this. And I cover yeah, a couple you of... Know, yeah, Mary Beth, one, one of the questions I want to ask you is, mm -hmm. you know, you, before the call we were talking about uh, how publishers use this. Uh, give us a sense of, if I'm a publisher and I'm using this ad biblio tool, what, what am I spending? How am I targeting the ads? Yeah, uh, just, just a rough idea of budget. Um, because we always, okay. uh, it's an old saw, right, in the independent publishing world, we always say, well, publishers never spend any money advertising your book. All they do is put it in bookstores and maybe try and buy an end cap or buy a nice position, but they they won't right. really do anything for you. But that's not always true, right? Sometimes they'll no, use a service like Ed W. And what do they spend? No, it's not. Um, and actually, it's funny because we've had a couple authors who actually ran ads with us and then shared that with their publisher, and then their publisher came back and actually bought more ads with us. Um, so it is really interesting. But, you know, typically publishers spend anywhere between $500 um, to $5,000. Um, but typically, you know, it's a, a campaign for one book is around $2,000. Um, and so what they do is they usually come to me and we look at the book together and we talk about the different targeting options that we can do. And then we go into our really cool tools, which I'll tell you about later, our targeting tools. And, you know, we figure out who we can target for this book, what we want to do. Um, and then what's also really great, and I'm going to cover this a little more later as well, is that because we've been running so many of these books, we've gathered these pool of readers that we know have an interest in these books. So if somebody comes to us with a thriller book, we've run several thriller books, and we can retarget those people um, and and, you know, really get the book to them, those people that are probably going to be most likely to click on your book. Um, and so, you know, we've done this a lot now with publishers. Um, they're coming to us, you know, obviously a lot of publishers, even like the special niche ones, uh, publish, you know, obviously very niche books. So they know that we, you know, have run books for pet books or whatever. And then they come to us and they've got another book that's similar and we'll run that. So that's really what we're doing with, um, with publishers now. Well, that's interesting. So, and and I want to. I'll, maybe we'll say this when we get to the targeting part. But I'd like to know more about mm -hmm. the, what kind of targeting help you can provide to an author that runs a campaign. Sure. So, I, one of the things I love about digital advertising is that it's it's in theory, it's easier to track. It's easier to buy a little bit versus having to buy a lot. In other words, exactly. you can scale your investment, and uh, and in theory, I can get results. I, in other words, I can know how many people clicked on the ad, how many people. You know, when they got to my site on the day of the ad run, how many extra sales did I have? Um, exactly. Exactly. One thing I wanted to add about, with that. About that. Oh, sorry. One thing I just wanted to add with that when you're talking about, you know, the reporting is what's really great about online advertising is that you can get real-time reporting. So, you know, what we do a lot is we look at a campaign, obviously, every day, and we see how it's doing. And we know, okay, maybe we want to optimize this campaign to reach now just this certain you know, maybe males over 30, because we see that it's doing really well with that audience. Whereas, you know, if you're buying advertising on print and TV, that's, that's it. It's in the newspaper, right? <laughs> so it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, the real-time uh, reporting of it is, is really, really important. Yep. Hey, David's got a question for us when we're talking about targeting. And he says, hey, do you, do you evaluate the book by reading it and then help the author decide on the best way to target the, uh, the campaign? Or are you counting on the author to come to you with a well-defined target audience to say, here are the people I think will, will be interested in buying my book? Mm, that's a great question. Um, you know, we don't, we don't typically read the book. Um, I wish we could read all the books that we advertise. Um, but, you know, usually we, we like the author to have, obviously, you know, an idea of who they want to reach. Um, and that's kind of where it's really great that we collaborate with them, you know, because we have experience running so many different types of books. So they might come to us, you know, and say, oh, we want to target, you know, females 18 to 30. And we'll come back and say, great, let's try that. But also, let's add in, you know, I don't know, people who are interested in cooking or something else that we saw work mm -hmm. for other similar books. Um, so it's really a collaboration. Um, but, you know, I think that's it's a really great part of our service is that we now have this knowledge 
a targeting, you know, that we've, okay. that we've done it so much that, and especially as you see with the chapter teaser that we do, um, the chapter teasers now, we actually will read that first chapter. We don't just, you know, randomly mm -hmm. pick something. We reread through it and we've become sort of experts at picking out which excerpts, you know, or, or experts at picking out which excerpts are going to be best to uh, really leave, like, people wanting to read more. Excerpt experts. I love that. All right, now <laughs> we're going to talk about a couple technical terms, uh, CPM, CPC. You want to talk about what those are in relation to online advertising? Yeah, so I just I wanted to mention those two acronyms um, because if you are interested in doing any paid online advertising, um, it's going to be really helpful to know these. Uh, CPM stands for cost per thousand impressions, uh, meaning that you pay a certain price for a thousand times that your ad is displayed on a site. Um, so if you want to spend a hundred dollars to advertise advertise on a site and they have you know an eight dollar CPM, you're going to get Twelve and a half thousand impressions. Um, so what you're doing is you're paying eight dollars for every thousand impressions. What's nice with CPM is that you know how many people you're reaching, right? If you're buying an ad in a magazine or a newspaper, they might give you an idea of how much it's circulated, but you don't know actually how many people are seeing the ad that it's you know it's on that page. Um, CPC, another one. This stands for cost per click, meaning that you only pay every time someone clicks on your ad. So, you know, advertisers then, you, would pay the website owner um, when their ad is clicked on. Or you pay the, you know, Yahoo and Google are too popular. Uh, yeah, the network. You pay the network for the business. cost per click. <laughs> right, right, right. And so that, you know, I think you can just put in a certain amount of money and you're just paying every click on your ad. Yeah. And, and back to CPMs for a second. So if, I, uh, if I'm buying stuff on a CPM basis, um, uh, but my ad is always always shows up what they say at what they call below the fold. That still counts as an impression, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. So I'm, I'm so for sure. for everyone who's joined us, right? Um, if I buy an ad on a website and the website's a tall, skinny website, and my ad only shows up below the average screen size, meaning in order to see my ad on that website, you would have had to scroll the screen up. You should know as a buyer of that advertising that you just got charged, if you will, for a display, even though nobody's, even though you're not certain they actually scrolled up to see it. So just an important right. thing to know about. Right. Um, you know, I will say with our ads, what, what is great, though, is that we, so we give you a lot of reporting back, right? And so we're going to tell you how many people hovered over that ad for half a second mm -hmm. or more. And these numbers are usually really impressive. And it's, and it's nice for us because we know then, and it's nice for you, because you know that, oh, OK, you know, it is easy for an ad to get lost on, online. We know that. Um, but you know, with these stats, you can say, OK, at least I know this many people actually, you know, their, their mouth was over my ad. Like, it was on their screen, so they saw it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. So yep. now I need to be worried when I'm on a page with ads. <laughs> if I hover my mouse over an ad, I'm going to get tracked. OK. Let's talk yeah. about platforms. Okay, yes. Yeah. So let's see here. Um, yeah, I just I wanted to quickly touch on a couple of other popular places for advertising. And again, I mean if there's anyone out there listening who has had a great experience with these or terrible experience with these, um, I would love to hear from you. I'm always really interested in to know, you know, how these other services work. Um, so the first two up there, Facebook and Twitter. So I mean the great thing about Facebook and Twitter right off the bat is that they are very cheap probably not going to break, uh, break your bank to spend five dollars on a Facebook ad. Um, so you know if you're if you're looking for a way to really boost your brand, then this is where you want to go. Um, you know because obviously you can get people to like you and follow you and all that. And Twitter and Facebook they all they do have specific targeting tools that allow you to target people by demographics, traits and behavior. So you know they do have those built into their system. Um, but I will say this, there is this myth sort of floating around out there, and I know because I hear it all the time, um, that if you get so many people you know, liking your page or following you, that it will convert into book sales. I cannot emphasize this enough. Uh, social media is a place where people go to be social, not where they go to buy things. Um, so you know, it's, it's like when people try to use social media to sell a lot of books, it's, it's like the equivalent of grabbing a hammer to get a screw into a board. You know, it'll work a little bit, but it's mostly going to waste time and frustrate you. Um, 
And you know, and here's the other thing that I've seen with authors in social media is that they end up spending more time working on their Facebook and Twitter pages and optimizing these ads. And you know, Facebook and Twitter are really confusing, and they're constantly changing around their platforms and adding all these new little features, which are really confusing and take you know days to understand. Um, and they end up spending less time on what they're great at, which is writing. And so you know, it is a little frustrating to see that sometimes. Yeah, and then, uh, Goodreads and then, is a different, little different platform, and BookBub is even a more direct platform, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Goodreads, um, you know, Goodreads is a place where people can organize the books they read, books they are reading, books they want to read. Uh, generally, just a place to socialize about books. Um, so remember, I talked about that pay-per-click advertising. That is what Goodreads does, and they are fairly affordable. Um, they have a five-dollar, I think, five-dollar minimum spend. But remember, I mean, those ads are the ones, if you've ever been on Goodreads, those are the ads on the side that just have like the small picture of your book cover and a little description. And it's really those ads that probably most people are immune to. Um, the big pretty ads when you get on there, those are the ones I know, those are the ones that the publishers are typically buying, and those start around $5,000. So it can get really pricey to make an impact with just a rectangle ad, um, just a 300 by 250. And so, you know, I know with a lot of the good campaigns, it's, it's to get your people to add your book to their shelf, um, which is great. And if you want to do that, that's a great way, obviously, you know, to build a social connection with your audience on there. Um, the problem is with that, too, though, is that, and I know because I've done this, is that a lot of times you'll add the book and it's just going to stay there, right? <laughs> it's just going to stay on their shelf and, and maybe they'll come back to it later or maybe they'll forget about it or they won't log back in until, you know, three months from now. And of course, you say 300 by 250, you mean the pixel size of that small rectangular ad on the side. Yes, yes. 300, mm -hmm. 300 tall oh, by 250 wide. No, the, so the 300 by 250, it, it's the um, rectangle ad. It's, it's, it's the bigger one. So if you, add, if you uh, go on Goodreads, you'll see it. It's like right on the right. It's kind of, it's, it'll be the flashier ad. The ads that are pay-per-click are the really small ones, and they kind of, I mean, they look like they just kind of, blend into the content if you and they're always and they're usually at the bottom. So if you're scrolling down, at least where I see them, they're at the bottom. Um, if you scroll down, you'll see them. It's just like a little small image of your book cover and text. Okay. Let's, let's talk about that video. Yeah, okay, yeah, let's move on. Um, did you want me to mention BookBub at all or you want to just move to Abidleo? Uh, we've talked about BookBub before. I think uh, BookBub as a curated book broadcasting service is a good choice. Hard to get into, can be hard to get into until you've got, say, a couple of a couple dozen reviews and so forth. Uh, but can be, at least according to their stats, very effective, uh, and can actually make money back for the author, I believe. Interesting. Okay, great. Yeah. So let's move on to Ad Biblio. Um, so Ad Biblio. Yeah. First, I'm just going to show you um, some of the ad units that we have. Then we'll talk about that specific targeting, and I'll show you a couple case studies and how to set up your campaign. Our content-rich ads. Well, first, let me give you a little, just a little bit of a background on us. So, like I said, we came about from blogads.com, um, and blogads is where we were helping book publishers and authors uh, since I think 2004 to advertise their book on niche blogs. So, traditionally, um, publishers and authors would come to me with their book and a budget and ask me, "Okay, you know, what can you do for me? Here's my book," um, and I would draw up a list of blogs in our system, you know, that might fit their needs. So what we realized is that many times we just couldn't find that niche site, right? So I'd have clients come to me with these really, really specific niche books, you know, like sewing, toddler, potty training books, <laughs> and it was frustrating because we just couldn't effectively reach the audience that they were looking for. And so maybe I'd have like one blog that could work for them. Um, you know, and, and every time I'd, I'd meet with authors or publishers, they'd be like, oh, you know, you're, you're really great, but you need more men-focused sites or cat lover sites or whatever it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, you know, what we realized at that point is we need a way to reach those readers, those niches of people, even if the site doesn't exist. Um, and so my team and I really, we just took all of our knowledge that we knew about working with these, with these clients and what we knew from the book industry in general, and we created a Biblio. So um, first we'll talk about our content-rich ads. So this, this first ad here, the chapter teaser, um, I, I call it our star unit um, because it really has been the backbone of the other ads that we've created, and it's really inspired us to really create engaging ads. 
So this ad actually lets you scroll through the text of your book without leaving the page. Really cool. We have tested and tested and tested and tested this ad over and over again. Um, and you'll notice that it is kind of a little bit plain. Um, we, it's funny because at first, you know, we thought that having, you know, having the really pretty book cover and then you open it up and then, you know, you can scroll right through and all of that. We thought that would be best, but, you know, as happens so often in advertising and testing new products, um, we were surprised by the outcome. And really, the simpler, the better for this ad. Um, you wow, know, I, think I was, I was going to completely suggest that, well, couldn't you move the tile over to the left a little bit and put a little image of the, of the book cover to give it a little color? But you must have tested oh, yeah. that, and it didn't come out as well. <laughs> we tested that because that's what we thought, right? I mean, that's, you know, that's what we assumed. Um, but, you know, I think this ad is so great because I think, for one thing, it, it really blends into the site. And it doesn't yeah. scream in your face that it's an ad. You're not looking at it going, this is really annoying. You're like, oh, you know, what is this about the election? You know, and you kind of start reading. And you get really intrigued by it. Um, and, you know, so this ad's really cool because, you know, I, I use this comparison a lot, but I really like it. It's, it's really like putting your mystery book, if you have a mystery book, you know, it's like putting it in the front of the Barnes & Noble store um, and having hundreds, you know, or thousands in some cases if we've seen people walk into the store who like thriller books, picking up your book and reading it. Like, that's, that's how we feel about this ad. Um, it's, you know, it's really great. And like I mentioned to you before, we've, we've become pros at picking out what works <laughs> and what doesn't with the actual text of the ad. Um, and so, mm -hmm. and, and I'll talk about a little bit about this later when I tell you how to set up a campaign, but we're definitely here to help you. If you're like, I don't know which excerpt I should use, like, we can definitely help you with that. Yeah. Uh, a really cool and this one looks like at two hundred dollars, it's pretty easy to get into trying one of these. Into what? I'm sorry. It it looks like at two hundred dollars, it, it's it's pretty easy to try one of these. Oh yeah, definitely. It really, really is. Yeah, and and what's great with this is we're going to give you a lot of rich data back. So we're going to tell you um, how far people read, uh, um, how many people read, uh, what kinds of people read, and what sites they were on. You know, so you're really it's it's really interesting because you're learning so much more about your audience itself and it's going to give you a lot of tools moving forward in advertising your book and yeah, yeah and like it's I said this one, research tool exactly exactly I mean it's pretty I mean that's pretty much what we're doing for you in a, in a sense with this ad as well you know we're doing so much optimization on our end we have a team that you know literally uh, every day they're logging in they're checking out your ad they're seeing who's interacting with it who isn't and they're um, you know and they're looking at that so at the top it says want more click here. So where do most authors point the click here? Do they point at their Amazon sales page? Do they point at their author website? What 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 are, what are those smart authors doing? Yeah, so what um, typically they're doing is going to their Amazon sales page. I know that was the case for this book. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it really depends on the author and what they want. Um, you know, it is great if you have a site that just gives you different options of where you can buy from. You know, it's great because maybe some people don't want to buy from Amazon, you know. <laughs> maybe they have an account yeah. in Barnes & Noble or whatever. Um, but, you know, really just definitely somewhere that when they click on it, there's going to be an option to buy, right? <laughs> I, I can see a strategy of, yeah, I can see a strategy of building a, a, a mini landing page on my author website that specifically receives traffic from this ad and ads like it where, I give you the, the the link to purchase it on Amazon, Kobo, Apple, Barnes & Noble, mm -hmm. all the stores, and I give you a chance to download in Mobi or EPUB or PDF format um, more than 800 words. So maybe I give you the first four chapters or something as a true sampler, uh, of course, with a link embedded at the end of those to, again, and buy it on any of those sites. That's what I would do with an ad like this, but I don't know. I'm crazy. Yeah. Well, no, actually, I mean, this one, so we, again, with, the, um, you know, want more click here, we've that, that's what this author wanted, so, um, which I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure. So a lot of times we will also do, you know, click here to read more. Um, but we've, we've tested all these out ah. several times. Um, and so, you know, it, it really depends on what the ad is itself. We've done a couple ads where maybe they're giving away a couple free ebooks. you know, so if they mm -hmm. click here for a free sample or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. the purpose is. Um, you know, this one was just specific to this book. But we're open to... To ideas, you know, we, we kind of want to get whatever your, your goal is. If it's just yeah. immediately Let's talk about the classic book ad. Yeah, 
classic look at. Um, yeah, so we call this, these are just basically, remember I, I mentioned that 300 by 250 image? So these are the kind of ads like that you would see on Goodreads. Um, uh, you know, of course, what we found was obviously not every book is going to work with the chapter teaser. Um, you know, if you have a children's book or whatnot, that's not going to work. So we have a classic banner that you can do. Um, the great thing with these ads, like the chapter teaser, is that they start at $200. So they're very affordable. Um, and also, you know, we will create these for you, which is also we have a really fantastic um, in-house design team. They do a great job. We've created tons of these ads so far. Um, so we really have, you know, an idea of what works and what, you know, what you want to be included in the ad. But of course, and of course, you know, we, we, create, it, we create it for you and then we send it to you. And, you know, we get your feedback on it if you want to make any changes anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, or if you just want to use your own, that's great too. Yep. And in this too, I mentioned here, um, so there's another term that if you're doing online advertising, you're going to hear, and it's, it's CTR, and that stands for your click-through rate. So that's the percent of people that are clicking on your ad, right? Um, we see pretty high, typically pretty high click-through rates with these ads, um, you know, which is great. So people are clicking on them and going, you know, as well. But with these ads, too, in terms of interactions, again, um, you know, of course, these aren't content-driven ads, so there's nothing to scroll through or listen to. But, you know, we do offer, um, we do tell you if people, or, or how many people um, interacted with the ad for longer than half a second. So, again, that's really great. We get the hover data. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. and All then right, next one is custom ads. Yeah. Custom ads, yeah, I'll just shortly touch on these. So um, with, again, remember I mentioned that Chapter Teaser was our star unit um, for a reason. Uh, so it, it really made us excited to try out other ads. Um, the Carousel ad, really fantastic, really great for books with strong images. If you have a children's book or you want to do a couple of books in your series, really great. Um, you know, it has that one big image and then a couple little images below, and it basically scrolls through them. So it, it's always changing. and. We is, see. It, is it scrolling actively or scrolling on hover or interaction? Is that, uh, tell me how Scrolling that actively. Scrolling actively. Okay. So it's always scrolling. Yep. Um, so, you know, it definitely catches people people's eyes. Um, so, yeah, that's a great ad, again, like I said, for series and for um, children's books, cookbooks, photography books, anything that's very visual. Um, that The second and third ad there, that's the lit vid and the audio book. The lit vid um, is... You know, we kind of got the same idea with the chapter teaser. What if somebody has a book trailer or they have an author interview? Uh, this is great because they can just um, actually start watching the video. And again, we're going to tell you how many people watched halfway, how many people watched right to the very end, right? And same thing with the audiobook. Or also, we're finding now that podcasts are, you know, gaining a lot of popularity. So, um, you know, with this, again, it's really cool. Um, it'll And these ads, I'll mention that an audiobook, they'll actually, you know, start playing as the site is loaded. So, you know, if you're buying, if you get, I don't know, like a 12, 2,000 impression, that's 2,000 people that you know are going to hear your book because it's going to count and it's going to start playing. Not safe for work. So is there a limit on, the, on how long the video or how long the uh, audio sample is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the audio book, um, you can include up to two minutes of audio. For the lit vid, actually, we can, we, what we do is we just put in a YouTube or Vimeo clip. So if you have your uh, book trailer on YouTube, perfect. You just you fill it right in there. Um, and then you'll see like this one, so that lit vid ad, um, with that banner on the top there, so we, that's like where it, what it first looked like on the site. And so we added mm -hmm. that up there, and then the video started playing, and it was the YouTube video book trailer. Got it. Yeah. And so these, and the, these, um, go ahead. As you see, the, this, was, the minimum spend of a thousand is that a setup fee, or is that you're going to buy a thousand dollars worth of impressions or click-throughs, and then we'll set up the ad for you? How's that work? Yeah, here, here's the cool thing. That's, I mean, it is a thousand dollar minimum spend, but we're going to we're going to do everything. We're going to create the ad for you, um, set up the targeting, all of that, and so um, yeah, and so that that's just you know we just these ones are a little, sometimes a little more difficult to put together, um, you know, mm -hmm. and a little more custom, Thanks obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so, you does, know. Does the, does the ad network charge you more to display those uh, interactive ads or have self-starting ads? 
That's a good question. I don't, um, I don't think so. No. Okay. I don't think so. Nope. I think it's just that 300 by 250 space. All right, great. And then uh, the event ad, um, see here, the event ad, yes, I, I love this event, I love the event ad. So we actually got the idea to do this ad from our local bookseller. Um, we're based in Durham, and Flyleaf Books, which is a really popular independent bookstore, is located just down the road from us. And, you know, we realized, going there, we go there a lot, that there were opportunities to work with booksellers and authors in advertising their events. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so... It, this is really great because, you know, this is a chance we, we can run the ad 10 to 15 miles outside of that bookstore. And we can do the very specific targeting, which we'll talk about, um, 10 to 15 miles around. So it's really amazing. You know, like for, I'm looking at Thug Kitchen right now, that middle ad, um, you know, we we're able to target, you know, this was a book for sort of like the younger generation, the kind of like hip generation or whatever, um, that were into cooking, into like healthy eating. And so we targeted those people. And it ended up, I mean, the attendance was incredible. I mean, the click-through rate on that was like a 0.45%, which is ridiculous. So, you know, this yeah. is really good. And, and we haven't seen anything like this, which is why we're really excited about this. And, you know, um, right now, which is really exciting, we're offering this ad, if you have an event uh, that you're doing, um, for $50. And that's going to reach you over 3,000 people. I think it's something like 3,233. Yeah, wow. So it's really great. I stay for a limited time because these are doing really well, <laughs> and we're getting more demand for these. Um, but you know, if you're if you're watching this uh, this webinar, like we will get to do this for you, fifty dollars. Um, yeah. So yeah. And, and I can imagine I can imagine that geotargeting, which is what you do, I'm sure, to to reach in a specific area around an event space, um, it can be very effective when you've got the right target audience. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I just assume that oh, UNC, yeah. the students at UNC, were big targets in Chapel Hill for oh, this yeah. message, and I'm sure they mm -hmm. had a lot of, uh, you know, people, kids with time on their hands who were in college. Exactly. Yeah. No. I mean, it it definitely can be really effective. You know, and booksellers. I mean, they typically will just use social media, but you're only reaching, you know, so many people or the people that follow you, and there's a lot of people yeah. in the area that might not even know you're there which is why this is really perfect for booksellers, too, you know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's for their store, too. But um, so it's you, really great with yeah. you know, uh, I was going to say sorry, what's great really with great what we've been doing is, you know, if what we want to get to the point is, is if someone has, if you're doing a tour, let's say, like, in Pennsylvania and Ohio, and there's, you know, five or six different stops, that you pay us $200, $300, and then we just hit every single one of those cities or those towns on your way. And it's kind of just like, you know, it's, it's, so we're really just bringing more people to your attendance. And like I said, yeah. we were able to go to these events, and we, we were able to know that these worked because we stood up there and said, you know, how many people saw this ad online? And, you know, we found that the attendance was increased by 25%. That's really yeah, that's outstanding. And so it's probably something even, I could even experiment with as an author in my local region before I plan out a tour where I'm going to start driving around and, do, and try to do signs Absolutely. at various bookstores. Okay, so, so, we've, so we've looked at the ad. You call your, your ad units. I guess I sort of think of them as the various products that you could buy as an author. So you've got a, so a bunch of choices here for uh, audio ads, video ads, mm -hmm. uh, event ads, custom ads, scroll ads, um, uh, but your service goes beyond that, I gather. It's not just the ad itself. It's also will help you, uh, once you tell us who the target audience is, reach that audience and hopefully that audience only. Exactly. Um, yes, exactly. Uh, you know, as I mentioned before, and we cover a little bit, we offer really incredible, incredible targeting um, down to reader demographics, traits, location, as you saw with the event ad, um, and genre preferences. Uh, and, and what I think really makes us stand apart, especially is that genre preferences where we have that lovely pool of readers, you know, that we've kind of been collecting and we can retarget those people. Um, you know, so, you know, for example, we run a lot of parenting book campaigns and, you know, because of that, we have this collection of people online who we know have a history of interacting with these types of ads. And so really, they're more likely to interact with yours and more likely to buy yours. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, we we take this genre preferences and we, um, you know, and we and we throw it into this lovely diagram that you see here. 
and so this is this diagram um, is, is really how we reach that really sweet spot. You see your readers in the middle. <laughs> we're we're mm -hmm. uh, targeting traits, demographics, and we're finding them on the sites that they're on, right? And so, um, you know, it's really fantastic. Another great thing that we usually we add into our campaigns a lot, and it's really important, is that we can target people who we know buy books online, right? Those are the people that you want to reach. You want to reach the people that are spending money on books online. Um, so it's great. Um, and I know, I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, all right, that's great, you know, but where is my ad showing up? So the way that it works is that we have an inventory, we have inventory, access to inventory across a wide range of sites. Um, you know, we have inventory on New York Times, USA Today, Rolling Stone, uh, MTV.com, like just a bunch of, you know, kind of all these different niches of sites. Um, you know, for and so if you do a campaign with us, I can give you an idea of some similar sites that it might run on. Um, you know, for instance, now we, we do a lot of young adult romance books. And so I know from the campaigns we've done, you know, that sites like Elle and Thought Catalog, People, Seventeen, Hollywood Life, I mean, these are the places that we're seeing these readers show up time and time again. Um, and if we're targeting females 18 to 30 years old, that's probably somewhere similar sites to that is where your readers are going to show up. Um, yeah. you know, so we can give you we'll, uh, um, we can give you an idea of where it will run, um, but we, we don't guarantee site placement. And this is because we do, we feel it's more important to target the specific readers. Again, you know, even if that site doesn't exist. So, sure, um, sure. So uh, Christine's got a question for us. Before I get to that, though, I've got a question for the audience, and then it's for you. So I, I'm gonna, before I read Christine's uh, question, I'm going to ask the audience. So you know, we've got about a dozen of us out there um, who are active. Uh, I would be curious to ask Mary Beth, um, for example, for me, do you, if I came to you with a science fiction book, could, could you say, well, yeah, we've got experience placing ads for science fiction books. We've got a cohort of target people we think like science fiction books. Uh, or, mm -hmm. no, that's not the case. We haven't done science fiction yet. So I'll ask that of Mary Beth. And then while I'm doing that, I'd like uh, the people in the audience who have specific genre-based questions mm -hmm. to just throw up, in, throw up in the question box, you know, your genre that we should ask Mary Beth about as well. So Mary Beth, what about science fiction? Yeah, science, uh, science fiction. We've um, we've definitely run some science fiction books in the past, um, and actually, we've, we've run a lot of by by fantasy, like young adult books. You know, so we've done a mm -hmm. lot of like it's the Hunger Games, Divergent type of audiences. Um, we're mm -hmm. definitely really strong there. Um, but I will say, because I'm always kind of looking at all the targeting options that we can do, um, that we I know we can target people who read science fiction <laughs> right off the bat, um, people who like science fiction movies. So a lot of times those people might be interested, you know, mm -hmm. also sure. in targeting. And, and I do want to mention, too, um, is that we, we use keywords a lot as well. And that's really helpful that if there is a really, you know, if you, hmm. um, I'll just say, even for like, for instance, um, uh, like an event ad that we ran for, for Love Grossman, like we were targeting keywords he's an author, we were targeting keywords for people that were searching for Lev Grossman or whatever or in our area. Sure. So we knew we could do that. Um, so, you know, a lot of times we do use keywords, um, but we need a little more time with keywords. So if, if you have a very specific book, you know, it may take two weeks before we can actually start running the ad. Great. I got it. Here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, let me, uh, first I want to jump to Christine's while everyone else is throwing their genre in the question box. Christine's got a question uh, back with the event ad. She said, hey, when you're when you're targeting uh, three thousand or thirty thousand or three hundred thousand people around uh, Chapel Hill and make it up, how do uh -huh. you how do you pick the how do you find and pick those people to display the ads to that might be interested in Thug Kitchen? How, how yeah, do you do yeah. target them and and who's seeing those? Yeah, well that's great. So I mean, like I said, we have tools that will actually um, that are able to tell, to, I guess, to kind of spot out computers <laughs> that are. 15 to 20 miles within that store. Um, and, you know, a lot of times we're just targeting people who have an interest in local and community events, but we'll also add in that specific targeting as well. And so it, 
it can see, you know, it, it, it sounds kind of creepy, you know, the targeting that we can do, but, you know, we can, we can tell people that are, would have an interest in these sorts of things or that, you know, maybe that they attend local events a lot or, you know, that they have an interest in sci-fi and maybe they just bought a sci-fi book or online or something. Um, Got it. And those are the people that we target. With, with event ads, we've actually found a lot of the targeting that we do ends up on new sites which kind of makes sense, um, you know, uh, uh, when we run a lot of our ads in Raleigh, it's, it's ended up on, you know, WRAL, which is like our big local news station, you know, so sometimes it's not those big sites like a Rolling Stone, it's just those little sites that are mm -hmm. local to you. And we actually have inventory sure. to a lot of those, a lot of those. So <laughs> we actually, Great. yeah. I'll okay, so we've, we, I've had a couple of genres roll in in the question box. Um, cool. uh, Dave would like to know if you've got experience targeting mem people who like to read memoirs. Yes, and we've actually done that. Yeah, um, there's actually, I think it might have been one of the books up here that I showed. Uh, I don't know. Yes, but anyway, yes, we've um, run uh, several memoir books and actually um, nonfiction books as well. And, you know, those have, been, those have been really great. We can target people who buy those types of books online. You know, we can target people who have bought similar books um, similar memoirs, you know, like I, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't remember what book it was that I was proposing, but you know, we were going to target people who bought like the A.B. Poehler book and that kind of, you know, those mm -hmm. kinds of books that you know they kind of like reading those books. So we definitely how about, have uh, yeah. How about non uh, nonfiction pre prescriptive nonfiction like books on nutrition? Oh yes, we're actually doing a big campaign um, at the end of this month um, with. Uh, uh, with Rodell, who does a lot of the health books. Um, we do a lot with them. So we actually have a nice collection of people there, you know, that have interacted with that type of book. Uh, we definitely have, you know, we have access to people that we know buy healthy foods. We have access to people who are vegan. You know, there's, it just, the list kind of goes on and on with that. Um, but we also have a lot of uh, great sites in our network, a lot of cooking sites, yeah. um, a lot of health-related fitness sites. You know, so there's really, there's a lot of people to be reached there. Um, and, that's, and that's definitely one, you know, for those kinds of ads, we found that just doing, um, like, that static ad works really yeah. well. You know, just having that one yeah. pitch out there and being like, here it is, you know, lose 10 pounds or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, that's All right, two, 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 two right. more genre questions. How about okay. uh, young adult? Oh, yes. That's yeah. probably one of our strongest. <laughs> yeah, good. And then Christine's kind of got, I think Christine's kind of got the best, uh, a very good question. She says, look. Okay. Just generally, which, which genre has the most success for this kind of advertising? Is it more effective for the younger, more tech book buyers, or is there a different demographic that it really works for? You know, who who seems to respond well to these? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, I think you know it's it's hard to be, it's hard because we see success with so many different genres, but um, you know definitely just fiction books do really well. Um, you know, I think because people who are really who are, you know, consider themselves bookworms, you know, we can target those people and they're probably going to be more interested in clicking on it, whereas maybe if we're targeting someone who's looking at a nonfiction book um, or, you know, maybe they're interested in healthcare or something, maybe they're not as likely to interact with it. You know, and I'll say, I will say, with the chapter teaser ad, it works best with fiction. You know, it works best with the books that have the cliffhangers, you know, the ones where people are going to be more intrigued to, to read it rather than the nonfiction to be honest. Um, right. And so I think, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of areas where we're really strong. You know, like I said, we're strong in young adults. We're strong in fantasy. Um, you know, we're strong in, we, we have done a lot of memoirs, um, different books, you know, like that. So it's, but it's hard because now it's, it's like, you know, in blog ads, we were always really strong in something because we had a specific site, but now we have access to all these different sites and we have targeting tools. Um, you know, that we can use to reach anyone. So, yep. you know, we're hoping okay. to become strong strong everywhere. That's the goal. Great. All right, let's talk about the first case study, uh, sure. the PA by VA, Knowles. Yes, the PA um, by VA Knowles. Yes, so this, this um, is, we ran this with, she's a self-published author, VA Knowles, who actually at the time was working with Lulu, and that's, um, you know, how we, we ran this campaign. Um, I'm not familiar, or I'm not sure if you're familiar with Lulu, their self-publishing company. Um, but this book, ebook, actually had gotten a lot of hype over in the UK, and but Knowles really wanted to get it start buzzing here. So this book is actually a memoir. 
number for the person who asked the memoir question. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's an insight into the working life of, of Knowles and the ups and downs, really, of her working as a PA in London. So a good amount of the book focuses on the nature of her boss and the bullying that went on with some of her co-workers and kind of that whole atmosphere. So mm -hmm. all that, this is a great example of collaboration. Um, all that Lulu and Knowles knew was that they, they were like, okay, we want to target young female professionals, right? So we knew we could even go further with that. And so we ended up targeting females 18 to 50 who were employed full time and considered career women and who worked in the business and administrating set it, a setting. And we also at the end actually added in um, this targeting option that we have that's young city females. And we got a little bit, we used that location targeting and we focused in on New York, Chicago, and LA. And we t um, targeted people that made fifty to $100,000 a year. Um, so, you know, these are people that probably one, would be interested in a book like this. They're working in a setting where this might appeal to them, um, and also they might just be able to buy it, right? So this, this ad ran on uh, great sites, Hollywood Life, Viral Nova, TMZ, um, the richest, a lot of gossip sites, um, did really well. And uh, 237,819 people saw the ad, and this is really great, 9,917 people scrolled through the text, <laughs> which is just remarkable. And of those, 982 people actually read the entire excerpt. Um, so that's really exciting because this was actually a pretty long excerpt. <laughs> so I think it was like, you know, 15 scrolls or whatever it was, I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. it was long enough that we were so excited to see that many people actually ran to the end. Um, yeah. And what, this, what, did this, what did this campaign cost? Yeah, so this campaign um, was a little pricier. And as I was telling you earlier, I actually have a campaign that I just um, and able to share with you now that's a little cheaper, but this one was two thousand dollars. So okay. it's you know it's on average it's on average with um, publishers, but you know I think you can p compare it to something smaller like a five hundred dollars. You know. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, but wow, two thousand got me um, a ten thousand who actually scrolled at least one sentence. Uh, um, that's amazing. That is it amazing. Is. Okay. It, so I mean, think about that. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, so I, I, well, I, sorry, I should show everybody what the ad looked like. So here it is, for example, in Hollywood Life, <laughs> top center. You're right; it almost does blend in and look like part of the site. Um, it blends right in. I mean, it's so simple, you know, but it works. <laughs> yeah, you'd almost, you almost wish it was wider. Exa yeah. Well, you know what? Speaking of that, we are actually in the process of creating a uh, 300 by 600 ad, so it's going to be double this size, which is going to mm -hmm. be really cool. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so it's even, even better. Yeah, wow. So hopefully okay, let's talk about case. Yeah, let's talk about case study number two. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, and you can just see there's another example of where it where it ran. You can see. Um, so, case study number two. This is uh, John uh, Clausen, and he is um, he's a Canadian writer, and he's an illustrator of children's books. And he was holding an event at a bookstore Monroe's in Victoria, British Columbia. Um, so what we did was this is a children's book, obviously. So we targeted parents with kids ages 2 to 10 um, who live within 20 miles of Victoria, British Columbia. And we, we added in some traits there, people that were avid readers, people that were consumers of children's books. So, you know, people that we know are buying children's books online, probably going to take an interest in this. Um, and also, right. you know, a, a good targeting thing that we, we typically tend to throw in with event ads is people who are interested in local and community events, right? People that like to go to these sorts of things. Um, this ran some great sites too: The Guardian, Times Colonist, National Report, um, and you know this. So this was a two hundred dollar spend. Or, I'm sorry, it was two hundred fifty. Um, and so it reached twelve thousand five hundred ninety six people. There were two hundred and two total interactions, and it had a really high click through rate um, of 026 six percent. And I will say, our event ads we see typically between 0.2 and 0.4 percent click through rate, which is actually incredibly amazing because the point of these ads aren't even to be clicked on, right? Like, we're giving you the information right. in the ad. <laughs> like, yeah. you, someone could see this and, awesome, I'm going to Monroe tomorrow night, you know. Um, so he's but, a, so, is, was Joe a self-published author or, or traditionally published? No. So John, John was actually, um, John. he's an author with Candlewick, who's a smaller publisher um, up in Boston. And so, uh, uh, yes, and so I had, I have a client up there that works with Candlewick and, 
they were like, we want to try the event ad, you know. Um, so, so we did, and we tried this event ad, and it was really great. Um, but, you know, we have run ads for, obviously, um, a lot of just authors as well that help yeah. publish authors. But, um, but, but the key here is this, this drove visits to what, what I'm guessing was a book signing, book reading at Monroe's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and did you, you know, get a sense of what kind of traffic they had? Did it, did it blow the store away? Because this helps the store. Yeah. This helps you convince the store if you're a self-published author to carry your book. Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, it looks good on you and it looks great on the store. Um, but, yeah, with this one, you know, I, I followed up with her and I, we were obviously really curious to know how this event turned out since we couldn't be in mm -hmm. Canada at the time. Um, but, uh, or British Columbia, yeah. Um, so it, uh, she said it was an incredibly well-attended event. And they're definitely going to run with us again. So, you know, just hearing that kind of feedback is really nice. And, I mean, if you look at the numbers, there's no way that at least one person didn't show up to this event. I mean, it would just be incredibly sure. rare with these numbers. And But, you know, if anyone out there has done an event, you know, sometimes just getting one or two people there is, like, the most exciting thing in the world, right? So um, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really great, yeah. Okay, great. And, so... So you want to talk about how we actually do this on Ad Biblio, and now we're sort of shifting into the very specifics. Um, sure. I do see you've got an offer here at the bottom. Definitely. Uh, yes, yeah, so how to set up a campaign. Um, so right now you can actually visit adbiblio.com, and on there you can actually submit uh, your own chapter teaser, and you can submit your own uh, classic book ad, right, that standing that, um, banner ad. And so this starts as little as $200, and it goes up to $800. Um, if you want to spend more, just email me, fantastic, and, you know, we'll help you get that set up. Um, but, I, you know, I do want to, I want to say that, you know, with this, again, we want to help you. So please, like, if you, again, if you're not sure which excerpt to use, if you want, want us to create that banner ad for you, we're going to do that. Um, so, you know, please, I like to just say, you know, email us before um, you want to run this. Um, or if you, if you have a couple of ideas, but otherwise, or you know, if you know what target audience, like we have where you can choose the genre, and you know, if it's a young adult book, then we know where it's going to run, right? Um, we'll run it, and we'll target those young adult people. Um, but you know, we always, and like I said before, we're always optimizing every single day. So we're going in and we're checking out your book, obviously every day, and making sure that it's performing, or at least doing our best to optimize its performance. Um, and you know, kind of maybe even try out different things and see what works, and then we'll give you that feedback. So, yes, you can go right online at biblio.com. You're going to see on, on the right side there, there's a chance for you to preview the ad. So you'll see what it looks like. Uh, and then you just, you pay, and you launch it, and it starts two days later. And then at the end of the campaign, um, you're going to receive a really detailed report. We're very proud of that. That includes the reader interactions, traits, where, the, where it was displayed. Um, you know, and, and all the information that you could want, probably more information than you can want, but we'll help you decipher it. <laughs> so, so Mary Beth, let's say, for example, I'm using this in conjunction with the, the pre-order for my new book, right? Okay. So I've got a new book. It's coming out uh, December. I'll make up a date, the 20th, um, or, or let's make it a little easier. It's going to come out February 14th, okay? okay? I've got a new book coming out February 14th. I've got it on pre-order, and it's a sizzler. And I want to do uh, an advertising campaign like this. And I've, in my budget, I, let's just say for the sake of argument, I've got $400 in my budget. Okay. So I go, I set it up, we email, you say, it looks good, you might want to change this and this, and we change it. And we mm -hmm. decide to launch it on, I'll make up a date here, February 1st. So mm -hmm. how, to, and of course I want to make sure that I've got my pre-order set up on the day that we launch because this is going to drop to my Amazon sales page or my author website or whatever. That four hundred dollars, that forty-five thousand displays, mm -hmm. um, is. Can you give me a sense of will that happen in a day, an afternoon, an hour, mm -hmm. a month, a week? What, what's the sense there? It's a great question. Yeah. So that. So all the campaigns we have when you submit them run for one month, um, and we spread those displays out over that time. We do this because we have found that the longer a campaign runs, the more chances we have to optimize it. Um, and the better performance it has overall. Um, but if is that, you is that true say, for the event ads too? No. <laughs> well, well yeah, concentrated. but the event ad is um, the event ad. We usually start seven days before the event, seven or so, um, and then run up obviously until about two hours before the event starts. 
Um, but okay. um, with these ones, you know, where there's not a deadline um, of somebody attending, these, you know, we find the longer that you run it, the more effective it is. However, we have had people buy this ad even just recently and say, you know, I just I want to run it for two weeks. You know, that's when my book my book's launching, and I'm doing this special for two weeks. Um, and you know, and we can change it around. We can definitely change it around. So it's whatever right. you, you like to do. It's just so that could be a, that could be a parameter when you when you buy the ad. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Well, well, it'll well use it, but just email us. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, Mary Beth, this is—I have learned a lot from talking to you today. Hey, this is uh, is very interesting. I, I didn't. I, I knew, of course, that you can run CPC campaigns and you can do them on Google. You can do them on Facebook. Uh, uh, Bookbub. I'm uh, sorry. Yep. Uh, Goodreads has got their own model, and uh, I had always been very skeptical of them. It, you know, what I've been telling authors all along is, if you have one book, it's going to be hard to make a return on your investment. For marketing, but if you have a series or you've got multiple books or uh -huh. you went out for a while and you want to relaunch, but now I look at this and I say, wow, for for two hundred dollars, um, uh, I, I might be able to do a little marketing research with a scrollable um, uh, eight hundred word ad, right? Absolutely. I'm going to get back yeah. some information. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, that that, that almost yeah that almost says give that a try. Um, I want to give our audience a chance to ask some questions before we close up. I know we're we're in the last minute or two of our appointed hour, but if you've got any last minute questions, I'd be happy to take them uh, from Mary Beth. Um, also, I put Mary Beth's contact information on the screen. Let me make sure I'm showing it properly. Yes, I am. So, yeah. so Please Mary Beth, if they've got questions and follow up, email you, call you. Fantastic. Perfect. Either one. Either one. Yep. Um, definitely email me. I will be happy to answer any questions. Again, like if, if there's a genre that you have and you're just not sure if this is going to work, let me write a proposal for you or just at least give you an idea of what you can do with us um, because there are a lot of options. And, you know, we, we want to work with you. And, again, like we're giving this 25% off, so that, that $200 ad is now 150 and you're still getting that 20000 yeah. So it really is great. Wow. Yeah, so, so please reach out to me. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Mary Beth, thank you very much. Uh, Daniel, I see your question. Where do I find local publishers? I don't know if that's a great question for Mary Beth, uh, but I'll try to follow up with you about it afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, but again, thanks everybody for joining us this afternoon. Especially thank you, Mary Beth, for all of your time. Oh, you're uh, welcome. We really appreciate uh, learning about Ad Biblio. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Take care. Take care.